All right, everybody having fun so far? Yeah? Woo! Beautiful. All right, let's give it up for Robbie Rist. Hello! All right. So I'm going to ask you a few questions, and I'm going to pass it off to the crowd. So right. let's get started. Sure. Were you always interested in a path of acting? Or I know you're also a musician. Which came first? Uh, well, uh, they kind of happened at the same time. Okay. I was... Uh, I, I started playing music at three, but... I think that was just a kind of an offshoot of just being a show off, you know, <laughs> right. like it was just, you know, anything to irritate my parents. Right. So, you know, bang on the piano for a little bit. They're like, can you keep it down in there, please? I'm like, ah, I'm a success. <laughs> so uh, there was a bit of that. And then, uh, yeah. And then I just had the, yeah, you know, it's basically, I don't know if it's an acting bug or a music bug. It's a performer bug. It's an art bug. Excellent. I, cause I still, you know, I mean, I'm, I don't do one thing. Right. You know, I do the acting stuff and I do the music stuff, but I'm working on a comic book right now. And I heard about I'm working that. on a web series. So I'm working on all this stuff. That's so great. It's all, I, I think I've just always kind of just been an art dork. That's excellent. Yeah. Never stop creating. No. No. <laughs> so how many instruments do you play? Uh, what's it again? How many instruments do you play? Uh, bass, drums, guitar, piano, mandolin, banjo. If it has strings on it, I can play it. Just get, you know, I need a little time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do you even need a backing band or do you just... <laughs> uh, I, I, I do it all, man. I do it all. I'm my own band. Perfect. I'm, I'm other people's band. I just, yeah. <laughs> the literal definition of a one-man band. I, you know, I just like doing stuff. Yeah. So, like, it doesn't matter to me if, like, one day I'm doing a singing job and then tomorrow I'm doing a voiceover job and then... I'm, you know, doing it on camera, whatever. I just like right. doing stuff. Right. Yeah. I, I have to say, uh, I got to see you perform at the Whiskey A Go Go with the Tasmaniacs oh, for yeah. the Voice Actors Rock concert out in L.A. Yes, a indeed. couple years back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was an incredible lineup. It was, it was you, Jim Cummings. Jim Cummings on drums. Uh, 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 B Billy West on guitar. Yep. Uh, Debbie Derryberry. Debbie Derryberry was singing. Yep. And I don't know, did I play bass or something? I forget what the deal was. I think you played, played bass, yeah. Bass or guitar, yeah, something like that. So, yeah, but it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. No, well, the crazy thing about what people, like, I get this a lot, that people come up to me and they're like, I want to be a voice actor. And the funny thing is, is that most of the people that are really successful voice actors are not voice actors, they're actors. Right. And they're really good actors. Yep. And it just so happens that where they pick up most of their work is using their voice. Mm -hmm. But Jim Cummings has so many different abilities. Yeah. Uh, you know, Rob Paulson, all of these guys, Jess Harnell. Yeah. Jess Harnell, aside from being a force of nature unto himself, is, does anybody know who Jess Harnell is? Yeah, okay, yeah. Jess is just like, so like he makes me feel calm. It's yeah. just, it's amazing. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But I mean, he's a. Gr have you seen his band, Rock Sugar? Oh yeah, yeah. Really great. That was so, fantastic. Yeah. So yeah. every like all those people are just really great. You know, Debbie's a hell of a singer. Yeah, you know? she yeah. is. Yeah. So, yeah. It was a great time. So, you guys probably didn't come here to hear about music, but there you go. A little sixty, little sixty cycle action going on there. <laughs> That's I, right. I'm also a recording engineer. <laughs> You do do it all. <laughs> but yeah, so how did you get the job with Ninja Turtles? Uh, auditioned. Auditioned? Uh, yeah. I, uh, I had had... That's a very re reverberant table. The reverberant table. It's my prog record I have coming out. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I had uh, I'd read for it, and they kept calling me back. And the funny thing is, about a couple of years earlier, I was in a band with this guy who was a big comic book nut. And he, uh, uh, while I was at his house, he said, hey, what do you think of this? And he gave me one of the original black and white turtle comic books. And you know, I was like, this is weird. All right, interesting. And then when, the, when they said they were making a movie, I, I didn't know that the cartoon was out and was a hit. Um, and so I heard they were making a movie about this thing, and I'm like, a little grim for kids, right? Anybody? And the funny thing is, during the making of the thing, they were saying that. The producers of the movie were like, I don't know if kids are going to go over this thing. It might scare them too badly. 
boy, were they wrong. But uh, but then, yeah, I just read it a bunch of times and I picked it up. And I say all the time that like Michelangelo isn't really an acting job for me because I'm from the San Fernando Valley. And I graduated high school the year the, the song Valley Girl was a hit. And everybody in my world talked that way. So my, my, my everywhere I went in my world when I was 17 years old, it was a universe of people talking like Michelangelo. Just nobody knew it yet. And uh, so doing it was like, I, I, I understand this. These are the guys I went to high school with, so. That's cool. Yeah. Just they weren't turtles. What? The guys you went to high school with weren't turtles. I didn't say that either. No. (laughs) That's great. Yeah, I remember, I think it was Rob or Cam or one of the guys from the original 87 series was talking about, they didn't think it would be a hit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So going into it, I know you knew the comics, but were you flying blind outside of that? Like, did you think it would be a hit or? I, I, I. I, I I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. And I'm always terrible with that anyway because right. I have a I have a friend who is the manager of some really big rock bands like Fall Out Boy and stuff like that. Right. And he said, hey, I'm thinking of uh, taking on this band. Do you want to come see them play and tell me what you think? And uh, they were this really cool band from Cincinnati called Foxy Shazam. If oh, yeah. I'm yeah. a uh, huge fan. So... But the thing is, they played, and then I walked up to Jonathan afterwards, and I went, okay, whatever you do, do not sign this band, because I like them, and that means that your career will be over, their career will be over, that's just everything I like completely disappears off the planet. (laughs) So I'm not the best judge of character when it comes to that. Right. Uh, you know, I was in Valerian, mm-hmm. and I'm watching that thing go by, and I'm like, this is going to be massive. I'm a made man. <laughs> no. I guess you should never go with your gut is what Don't, you're saying. I shouldn't. No. <laughs> I should just ask everybody else. Right. <laughs> what do you think? Going to be a hit? Yeah. Tell me. Although, you know, I do all these uh, uh, with the director of the movies. Um, I do songs for all the Sharknado films. Yes. Yeah, so, and I've been, you know, the director and I have been writing songs together for a very long time. And I, I will say that we were working on a, uh, another Asylum film called Hansel and Gretel. They were doing a, because basically what the Asylum does is shark movies and what they call mockbusters. Okay. So they do low budget versions of big budget movies. Right. So he and I were working on the Hansel and Gretel that they were right, doing. Right, like Transmorphers instead yeah, of Transformers. Yeah, yeah right. Say, right? <laughs> so Anthony and I were working on a song, and he goes, yeah, I, you know, I got offered from the Asylum to do this movie called Sharknado, and I remember getting out of my chair and grabbing him by the lapels, and Anthony's not the most emotionally forthcoming guy so it really was this sort of like what are you doing what are you doing what are you doing and i'm like i don't know why i'm saying this but you need to do this movie <laughs> and i don't i mean i uh I, yeah, other people told him to do it as well right. but i when i heard sharknado the nine-year-old in me just screamed out like a little girl oh yeah i was just like sharks and tornadoes ah <laughs> Understandably so. Yeah. <laughs> so what was it like for you returning to the Ninja Turtles franchise after so many years with the uh, 2012 yeah, series? I, I mean, it's like the mob, isn't it? You know, yeah. just when you think you're out, they keep pulling you back That's in. That's right. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, I mean, I, it's been like a, this weird part of my life right. since the 90s. Yeah. I mean, we're going on a little over 30 years of this stuff. Right. And, uh, I, you know... I, I'm a, I'm a part of something that's way bigger than me. Right. You know. Uh, yeah. And it's and I'm super fortunate to have been allowed mm-hmm. uh, to be a part of it. Sure. Uh. So, it's a. Any time I get to go back to it, I'm like. And the Mondo Gecko thing is great because I really didn't have to come up with a new character. Right. Yeah. yeah and just do the same guy. <laughs> Same paycheck. It's just an homage this time, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. it's, it's not ripping yourself off. It's an homage. Oh, it's ripping myself off completely. <laughs> so were you the one who decided to throw Cowabunga back in, or was that in the script? No, that was in the script. Okay. I was but, you say. know, uh, occasionally I will, when I'm doing signings, 
I will write, the hell is a booyakasha anyway? <laughs> oh, dumb. Thanks, Greg. Poor Greg has to say that all the time. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's about all the questions I got. Let's right. hand the mic around. Who's uh, got one? Yes, over there in the, in the glasses, sir. So what was your favorite and least favorite part about playing Michelangelo? Well, there's no real downside, uh, you know, and once again, I mean, he, look, part of the reason that that character is so popular is he gets to say fun stuff. And, and so I, I get to have these awesome words in my mouth that uh, uh, people respond to. I, 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 how many times at the table already people just walked up and gone, pizza dude's got 30 seconds, you know, so... That's amazing. That's a great thing. I guess the, uh, I guess the bad part about it is, is I'm I'm not in any of the new ones. How's that? Yes, sir. I was actually going to ask, did you see the new ones, and what were your, what was your impression of the new ones? This is my impression of the new ones. I'm going to make them aliens. Shut up, Mike. Just be quiet. <laughs> we don't, right. We're not interested in what you have to say about it. I'm, that's terrible. That's a terrible thing to say. He's a perfectly talented man out there making lots and lots of money. Is anybody familiar with epic rap battles of history? Yeah. Right? The Michael Bay one is, uh, I'm all about the money. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, anybody else? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Ah, you have to run around like this. Was it hard coming up with a voice for Michelangelo? One more time, a little louder. Was it hard coming up with a voice? Oh, that. You know, it's a, there's a trick to it. Uh, uh, you know, the technology now, because, you know, I do Naruto, right? So for the Choji stuff, I'm doing that exactly that automatic dialogue replacement stuff. And it's way easier now because if I'm a little late or a little early, some engineer can go, you know, boop, and then it's there. Uh, in the 90s, it was literally you had to nail that performance, you know. So uh, it, it was a bit tricky at first, but like, you know, it, it's my, it, it, this sounds really dumb, but, you know, it's my job. You know, I mean, like some people, some people have to split that rail, you know, some people have to, you know, get that stump cut in half with a big axe. I have to make sure that the lip flaps match. That's, you know, so. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Rob. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So. Mm. Where, oh, Brandon. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, my bestie wanted to ask this. He says, do you remember those roles you did when you were a kid and how do you feel that prepared you for what you are doing these days oh well i mean i had the i had the greatest on the job training i mean i didn't i i've taken some acting lessons in my time but largely i learned kind of as i went and so all of the things that I did as a, as a, I mean, just like anything else, you know, I mean, that's like asking a baseball, you know, asking a pitcher, like, you know, what, uh, what about throwing 900,000 pitches in a row has prepared you for what you're doing now? Well, I, I'm in the World Series, I guess, <laughs> doing all of the 9,000 throwing of balls thing was, was, uh, you know, that's what got me here. You know, it, uh, as, as Roger Waters said, it was all just bricks in the wall, man. Uh, every job, you learn something on. The, I mean, actors, you know, performers in general, it's, it's a freelance job. And so you can pick up all kinds of things from all kinds of different people with great regularity because every job is largely an, a whole new working team. So I learned so much about, about ego and, and being easy to work with and uh, being present when you're working. Uh, there, uh, there was a lot of things that, uh, I don't know, most, most 10-year-olds don't learn. You know, yeah. 
right. Well, did that now? Did that answer it? Kinda. All right. All right. I don't know. Sometimes I just I, I catch myself in the middle of talking, and then in the back of my mind, I see you guys looking at me, going, "Just shut up. Stop talking, Bob." Good Lord, driving me bananas. Because that, because that's usually what's going on back here. Back here, there's a little voice going, Sh shut up, Bob. They don't care. What? He said you sound like Raphael when you say that. <laughs> well, yeah. The funny thing is, uh, Michelangelo may have been everybody I went to high school with, but I'm way more Raphael on the inside. <laughs> so no, not, I'm not. So my question is, a lot of people here, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, were their heroes growing up. Who were your heroes growing up? Oh, uh, well, part of the reason that I'm an actor at all is because of Lon Chaney Jr. and, and his dad. Uh, I was obsessed with those 1930s universal horror films. And so much so that the Wolfman, which is, uh, it makes perfect sense actually that I'd be this melancholy bastard you see in front of you today because of the Wolfman, which is of all of those universal movies, it is the most navel gazy and, uh, you know, uh, so those guys, uh, you know, uh, also uh, uh, music always informed what I did. So, uh, you know, as an actor, I'm just as much influenced by Freddie Mercury as I am by Lon Chaney Jr. So, you know, I mean, I take I take everything, you know, it's all just entertainment is one big gumbo, you know. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Got you here. Uh, Ah, finally, this side of the room signs on. All right, good. Hi. Move my microphone. I was wondering if you'd be willing to say that famous line, God, I love being a turtle. God, I love being a turtle! <laughs> Boom! See? It's, it's, it's about four notes lower than it was when I was 30, but yeah, it's somewhere in that area. Yeah. Thank you. I catch myself doing Michelangelo now, and I'm like, oh my god, Michelangelo is an elder statesman. <laughs> so did you read originally to play Michelangelo, or were, were you interested in any of the other turtles? Yeah, no, the Michelangelo is the only one they really, yeah. I mean, I, and at the time, I was doing a bunch of dude voices for the commercials and things. Right. Yeah, so, you know, I was primed. <laughs> I was ready to go. Right. All right, any questions? Oh, all the way in the back. I'll be right back to you. Uh, run! I, 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 we're running out of time! Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Just a question. You were Mondo Gecko on the 2012 MTMA show. Indeed. Did they reach out to you, or did you hear they wanted a voice and you came in an audition? The, the, it's funny. A couple of times I've gotten jobs just because I was Michelangelo, and the producer of, the, of that show was like, uh, he he was trying to make it a throwback. He was trying to you know sort of wink at the audience. So uh, yeah, they reached out to me. Uh, another time, there was a Netflix series uh, called uh, Puss in Boots. They had did a offshoot of the Shrek uh, character thing, and there are these three villains in it. Uh, the they're, they're the three little pigs, and. For this show, they intentionally hired Mikey Kelly, Greg Sipes, and me. So it was all Mikey's playing the three little pigs. I was like, that is so inside baseball. Like, who is this joke for? Unbelievable. All right, so... A lot of times, uh, a lot of times, voice actors have uh, are in ensemble casts, and a lot of times you're doing like voice work when you're in a booth. Uh, for Ninja, Ninja Turtles, were you uh, for both the 2012 and for the movie? Were you in? You know, were you with the ensemble, or was it all in the in cartoon? Movie? We did it as an ensemble. Uh, the original movies were all one actor at a time. Sometimes I marvel at how much 
everybody like when you're a voice actor your ears are your are your your biggest ally and it amazes me that it sounds like they're all talking to each other even though nobody ever was in the same room together uh, button all right all right welcome to show business you're in so 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 would you say that um it was a lot more fun, or was it? You think it was easier to do it, um, you know, in the ensemble, or would you? you know, oh, it's would you... always all uh, in this era of mocap, you know, and the way they're making movies now, where it's all green screen, and you know that you have actors that are they're acting to a tennis ball, where I mean, and that's your job; it's what you're supposed to do. Actually, any voiceover people, uh, if you want to know how to really do it well. On YouTube, there is a making of Benedict Cumberbatch's scene from Destruction of Smog, and it's him in a motion capture suit doing all of the dragon lines as the dragon, but they also show what they ended up animating, and it is unbelievable how in the moment Benedict Cumberbatch is for this scene, considering that from head to toe, he's in a leotard with dots all over his face. And he still manages to get across this incredible scene where they're trying to steal the whatever from him. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm very literal. I'm very good with that. The thing that goes on with the stuff and the boom. Yeah. But it's it's really amazing. But in this world that we live in now of, you know, motion capture and stuff, it's really hard actually to act to nothing. Um, as a matter of fact, you have to... Basically what, what actors do is uh, the entire world is an appliance box. And what I mean by that is, when we were kids, if somebody in the neighborhood got a new refrigerator or a dishwasher or something, you know, that box, once it was unloaded, it went outside. And once outside, well, the kids have now turned it into a fort, or they've turned it into a castle, or it's a spaceship, or whatever. This is, and, and while you were doing it, while you were in this box, pretending it was a spaceship or a whatever, it wasn't a box anymore. When you're five years old, you have the ability to make the box transform into this thing you're imagining. And in that uh, uh, Cumberbatch thing, that's exactly what he's doing. It's really an amazing thing to watch. And uh, so my point though with all of that, ah yes, Green screen world. It's way more fun to do it with people. It's just, it's just like a lot of things. There are a lot of things in the world that are a lot more fun to do with people than not. Kissing. Kissing is a lot more fun to do with people and in the occasional pet. But, but it has to be there. You know, I've acted with dogs before. The dog is there. If I had to pretend the dog isn't there, it's a little more challenging. So... Uh, uh, that's uh, it's always more fun to do it with people because also you get the opportunity <laughs> there uh, there are people out there who do this a lot actually a lot more than me uh, you know guys like uh, Jim Cummings and Debbie Derryberry and, and, and these people and they bring so much more than just the lines You'll be in the middle of doing a thing with, you know, four or five people in a room and somebody will ad lib something and the people in the booth who will freak out at first because they're like, those aren't the words we wrote. Those aren't the words, you know, they'll, and then they'll go, oh, but it's funny though. <laughs> let them, let them go do the thing. And it, it's, it, more, you're always going to have those moments being in a room with other people. Uh, you can ad lib things by yourself, but it, eh. I, I like people. It's more, you know, art made with. I, I don't like. I don't like bands that are a drum machine and two guys. I don't really like that. That's not. You're not playing with people. 
I like, I, I like, you know, that possibility that something can go horribly, horribly wrong. Yeah. Well, well yeah, yeah. I look. Um, you can show me the slickest band in the world, and I'll be like, "Yeah, they're good." You know, you can tell they rehearsed a lot. But then put on something that looks like it could fall apart at any given moment, and I am riveted. Uh, it's just you know, I like that. I like that danger. Um, a lot of our entertainment that we have now has gotten way too sanitized. There's no, even, it's like even the danger, if there is any, is manufactured. Yeah. So Saw or, you know, any and movies, like you know, and they're perfectly fine, but it's, it's slickly, it, there's no real danger there. You know, the, the Human Centipede is a real movie. That, you know, anything that makes you go, no, 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 ah, oh, God. That's what I want to be involved in. Yeah, I would, I do, oh no, I've, I've been on the, I've, uh, I've emailed Tom Six, the, the guy who directed it, and I'm like, look, just go to my IMDB page, all right? I'm not joking, I, I'm legit, I've done shit, I want to be in your thing. Whatever it is. Yeah. I can't wait to rewatch this and see how you get from turtles to human centipede. That's going to be pretty cool. You know what? It, I, my Kevin Bacon number is one. <laughs> Let's just say that. What was it like working with uh, Corey Feldman? I've, well, I've known Corey since we were kids. Uh, there was a coterie of kid actors. Uh, Corey, me, Brad Savage, a uh, couple of other people. Corey was one of them. Phil Tanzini, uh, but we got everything. So if I didn't get that job, it was going to be Corey, or it was going to be Phil, or it was going to be Brett. And so we would go into casting sessions, and the the actor kids, we all got along fine because we're ten, you know, and we're we're like not at school at the moment, and we're losing our minds, and all that's great. We would walk into this thing, and we would see parents put their arms around their children like there they are you know so uh i've known Corey forever and uh yeah you know through it all and, and Corey is you know he's crazy as a shithouse mouse but but that said uh the guy's got incredible skill and he's a fearless performer uh I, 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 you know, much respect to the man. Yeah. I think we got time for one more question, so... Uh, gentleman with a beard. Ah, once again, this side of the room, although he's a little non-committal, there's a little bit of over here yeah. involved. Yeah, Robbie, so I just wanted to ask quickly, um, how were you able to transition from a child actor to, you know, more older roles, voice acting? Very painfully. Um, and, well, and musicianship and all I, You that. know, I don't know. It was all... It's all... It's, for, in my case, it was all a continuum. And I was, I was lucky in that when it looked like on-camera roles were starting to drop off a little bit. And basically an actor's career is a series of pulling the damn thing up the hill getting to the top of the hill a little bit, and then you roll back to the bottom of the hill. So I, uh, I, I've managed to keep my hills high enough and my valleys not that low. And, and just when I wasn't working over here, I went looking over here. Somebody told me when I was young, I forget who, but when I was young, somebody said, if you're going to be in entertainment, don't specialize. Uh, d learn how to do it all. Be a singer, be a dancer, be, you know, and I'll say as a, as a dancer, I I'm a pretty good actor. Uh, um, but, th but learn to do as much stuff as possible. So, I, you know, I, I produced a horror movie in 2006. Um, I'm writing a comic book now. I'm, cre I'm creating a web series right now. Uh, I'm reading for voiceover jobs. I'm uh, teaching people voiceover. I'm doing their demos, stuff like that. So pretty much 
like I, I'm just like a freelance plumber. I just go wherever somebody goes. You know, there's we have a job. What? I'm on my way, and then that, that's kind of it. It, it. There was very little of that. I, you know, kid actor, difficult time, adult working. Uh, I, I, I miss the the difficult time almost in, uh, completely. So I'm kind of hoping to go back to that. Maybe when like in, I'm in my 60s. Like, that'll be the time for all the drug problems, and, you know, that'll be awesome. It's good to have goals. Yeah, I'm, I'm aiming high. <laughs> yeah, so Cousin Oliver, uh, was that how you, was that style yours originally, or was that Hollywood manufactured, the John Denver sort of look that you no, had No, no, I on? looked, uh, okay, my, I'm first generation American in my, in my family. Oh, cool. So my parents are German, and... In Germany, every child looked like that back then. <laughs> so it was all page boy haircuts and round glasses. It was like Village of the Damned meets the Brady Bunch. You know? Nice. <laughs> yeah. Is that how they sold it? I believe it was. Okay. I cool. believe that's what they said. <laughs> Village of the Damned meets the Brady Bunch. I'm in. It's Rambo meets Alien. All right. I would watch that a lot. <laughs> you, you did. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, it's uh, that was uh, that's what I looked like. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm also glad that you kind of don't quite have that same look. Yeah, nowadays. no doubt. Well, you know, I, I, when I was young, I looked like my mom. I look like my dad now. It's kind of, <laughs> and, and my dad with a page boy haircut, not flattering. <laughs> not flattering at all. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, uh, it was, uh, I don't, and, and it's fortunate. I mean, it's a weird, perfect storm kind of thing that, just around the time that I decided to be a performer, John Denver got successful. And so here was already, and he had what? Page boy haircut and round glasses. Yep. It just turned out that way. <laughs> but, you know, it got me work. Did so, you ever get to meet him? Yeah, I was yeah. in one of his specials. I'd heard that, but I couldn't confirm it. Yeah, so. I, was, I was in one of his specials. And, you know, one of the things I really love about doing this is... I'm a history nut. Right. Um, I, I love the history of entertainment. I love history in general. Mm. Uh, I'm the member of my family who is like, don't throw out any pictures. Give me all the old home movies. I'm the archivist. I'm going to hang on to all this stuff. It's, what I, I, it's a thing that I'm interested in. Yeah. And so the history of the job that I'm in is sometimes... You know, I'll have to look. Somebody will be like, did you work on this thing? And I'll have to go to my IMDb page or whatever. Right. And I'll look at the cast list. Mm -hmm. um, I was in a movie in 1991 with Julianne Moore. Oh, wow. And I mean, now I, I could talk about how bitter I am about different career trajectories and all of that. But the truth of the matter is, I, I was in a movie with Julianne Moore. It's just crazy to me. Yeah, and you know, there's all these through. My, I mean, I, on the John Denver thing, I work with Dick Van Dyke. Oh, Dick wow. Van Dyke is television royalty. Yep. You know, Dick Dick Van Patten. Yeah. I just somebody just unearthed a anti-smoking film I did. It was three months after we shot the last Brady episode, huh. and Happy Days was just starting. Right. And this anti-smoking movie is Tom Bosley and the mom from Happy Days. Yes. Whose name I cannot recall. Yeah. Miriam. So, yeah, well, yeah. 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 Um, so it's those two as a married couple living in the Brady house. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So, but anyway, it, it's. It's Tom Bosley and, and Mrs. Cunningham. That is cool. Back when they were just kind of working actor people. Right. Like, like at one time, the Brady Bunch is like this. Yeah. It wasn't this iconic thing. It was just a television show. Yeah. And only over the decades of it sticking around have people, you know, continued to help it grow. Right. So, but back then, they, it was just a, another job, mm -hmm. right, for both of them. That's cool. And yet, I'm, you know, there's Bob. There he is, a little yeah. page boy haircut, round glasses. It looks like John Denver, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I brought it up. Uh, ah! <laughs> but yeah. So, is there anywhere people can go to find your music? Uh, all over. Uh, I have a Bandcamp. 
There's a RobbieRisk.net if you want to just, there's all kinds of stuff there. And, uh, you know, Facebook and, the, yeah. the, you know, the regular social media platforms. And, awesome. You know, yeah. And I'm like, you know, I answer instant messages, whatever. You cool. Know. Yeah. Cool. So go check out his music pages. Yeah. Download his songs legally. Yeah. And uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you for having me, you guys. And thank you for the great questions. It was delightful. Boom. Thank you for watching this video. I am Invader Zim, and I traffic in doom. And so, if you do not subscribe to this channel, you will have doom that befalls you by me, Invader Zim.